So thanks for joining today. We are going to be talking about Creo View. This is the viewer that PTC has to view Creo files, but as you'll see today, quite a bit more. Uh, so before we get into that, just a real quick uh, overview about Elite Aerospace Group. Uh, and my name is Stuart Weiler. I'm the director of CAD and PLM over at Elite uh, in the Elite Engineering Services Division. So as I am sure many of you have seen before, uh, we are the Elite Aerospace Group, which has several different divisions. One of them is the Engineering Services Group, and that's where I work. And with my team, we are a PTC partner. We use the PTC tools in-house, and we use those in our factory in the other parts of the company that has a factory where we actually produce parts primarily in aviation, hence the Aerospace Group part of the name. So we use these tools. That's how we got to know them. We use uh, we use Creo for some design. We use Windchill to manage our data. Uh, and as it pertains to today, we use CreoView as a way to view our data. Now, one of the important things to know about CreoView is that you can use it either in conjunction with Windchill or standalone. So I'll kind of show you both. You know, it, it really doesn't change too much. But when you have Windchill, every person that has access to Windchill already has access to Creo View. So you can use that as your viewer for all sorts of things, and you'll see what that looks like today. So lastly, about Elite, you can see as a PTC partner, we support all of the various tools that PTC offers uh, and provide services to go along with that. So whatever it is you need help with, we are here to help you. So moving on to Creo View, our topic for the day, uh, you can see that it's essentially one tool that can do a lot of different things. It fits into a lot of different parts of the business. Um, you know, they mentioned up top, easy to use, and, and I completely agree. It is, it is easy and straightforward to use. Uh, as far as scalable, its benefit is you can view large assemblies quickly. And I'll give you an example of that. Uh, and the idea, of course, you know, here you're seeing a train. Later on, I think you'll see an airplane. Of course, for my demo, I, I certainly chose to use portions of an airplane as well. Uh, and so those can be very large assemblies, and sometimes opening that entire thing up in CAD can be cumbersome. It takes a long time. Maybe it's a lot more detail than you need. So especially if you're looking for something like positioning, just to get a rough idea where things go, or take a couple quick measurements, you can use CreoView to do that. So it's fast, and single source for visualization, uh, that really refers to the fact that it'll open up lots of different types of data. So the name is Creo View, but it's not limited to only viewing Creo. Uh, it is extendable. I won't get into that too much, but there are toolkits that you can use in order to do some customization and additional things. So some of the other things that you can view, some examples here. Uh, obviously, the first part we'll look at are 3D models. So you can see the models as well as some of the metadata about them. But then you can use it for all sorts of other things, so electrical files, uh, PDF documents, Word documents, you can use it to make markups, you can review things, mark them up, and then if you're using Windchill, save those back into Windchill, and that can be a way that you can provide uh, a change request, for example. So if you're doing a review, you see a design, and you look at it, and something's not quite right, you can make some red lines in CreoView, save that, and then attach that to your workflow to say, you know, here's what I see that you need to fix, or if it's already been approved, maybe you find an issue, you need to make the hole bigger, open up the file in Creo View, make your notes. You can attach the note to a specific surface to make it very clear what it is that you're looking at and put a little note that says, you know, this diameter needs to be this. When you put in your change request, it is abundantly clear to everyone what it is that you're requesting. So it's certainly a very helpful tool for that. So the other file types that you can view, uh, you can see it supports both electrical and mechanical CAD files. Uh, a lot of them are listed here. Obviously, Creo and then CATIA, SolidWorks, Inventor, MicroStation, uh, IDES, CADIS5, NX, AutoCAD. Uh, virtually all of the major CAD tools that you can think of. Uh, and then, of course, any of the neutral files. So STEP, IGIS, JT, VRML. So if, if you do have a CAD file that does not uh, get supported by CreoView, you can always convert it to a step file, at which point you would absolutely be able to view it. Uh, and then 
other things that I mentioned as well. So drawing files, PDF files, even images. So bitmaps and JPEGs all included in there. Uh, again, there are toolkits available. I won't get into that just now, but certainly if you are looking to do some, some programming, some customization, it's available. You can use CreoView, for example, to create a view on a web page using the, the toolkit. Uh, this screenshot's uh, a little bit on the old side as far as what Windchill looks like. I'll get into showing you in Windchill what it looks like, but you can see that CreoView is embedded into Windchill, so that is what is used for creating your visualizations. So the process of making files for CreoView, the CreoView files are PVZ or PVS files, depending on some of your options and, and the types of files. But you can see that you can set up a publisher and it will create those files. That way, as when you're working in Windchill, you can check in your file. These viewers are automatically created. At Elite, we actually have batch processing, so that way not only are Creo view files created, but some of the neutral files as well, like step files. So every time someone checks something in, we're gonna have both, which means that everyone throughout the enterprise will be able to view the data, both the CAD and other file types with Creo view. But then if you ever need to export, you have a neutral format as well. So you can see, for example, some, exam uh, some places where this type of data might be useful creating positioning assemblies, for example. Um, if you have very large assemblies, you don't necessarily want all of that data all of the time. CreoView gives you a way to, to view just what you need. So you can choose to do individual files, and you can also sort of group things. What would be a large assembly, you can sort of treat as a single file. Uh, you know, significantly reduces the amount of data that is required or, or amount of storage space, for example. So you can, uh, as far as a user experience, it makes it a single tool for everything. We talked about a single source of visualization. You can use this one tool to view everything, drawings, 3D, image files, et cetera. And kind of alluded to this already, who's gonna use this? It really works for anyone in the business. You know, Obviously engineering has access to CAD tools. They may want to open their files in Creo, in Katia, in SolidWorks, but they may also not want to do that, especially if you are a multi-CAD enterprise. Using multiple CAD tools can be a little bit uh, encumbering sometimes. So you might have a primary and then you use CreoView to view everything else. Now, everyone else in the company, again, if you're using Windchill, can go search for something, open it up in CreoView. Even if you're not using Windchill, it is a tool standalone that everyone can use to view it. So someone like Supply Chain, would be able to open up the models, get a look at it, and get a feel for what is it. Because you can get a lot more understanding by seeing the Creo view files or so what the CAD looks like, as opposed to just reading the bill of materials. It's hard to understand what an assembly is just by seeing what its component parts are. But once you see that 3D image, you can spin it around, maybe take a couple measurements, you get a much better understanding. And that obviously fits for the other parts of the business. So uh, kind of some examples of some of the things that you can do with it. You know, I mentioned markups and just being able to view. You can create some animations. We won't get into that today, but something that can be done, of course. And it's particularly useful when you're talking about model-based definition. So if you have no drawings, because all of the manufacturing data, inspection data is all contained within your files, everyone needs a way to do that. Everyone needs to be able to see that information because what might have previously been put on a drawing where manufacturing may not have looked at the CAD files, they just looked at the drawings because that's what they were manufacturing to, and quality is just doing the inspection to the drawing, they may not have previously needed access to, to the 3D files. Now it's essential because that's all there is. That is the design authority. So they need to be able to view it. And when they do, Here's some of the things that they can see, regardless of where it's coming from, they can view the capture states, which are basically the equivalent to your views, your front view, side view, left view. They can do cross sections. Any measurements that you have put in as annotations, they'll be able to view. And there's with those capture states, you can kind of just click between them and it will rotate the file around and choose what is visible. So if you an assembly, for example, you want to hide certain elements of it, 
you can set that in advance. It makes it easy for everyone to really be able to see it. And as I mentioned earlier with the markups, if you wanted to highlight certain aspects of the geometry, for example, if I wanted to put a note on there that says, paint this surface, but you don't want all of them to be painted, you can select specific surfaces, attach the note to it. When you click on that note, it'll highlight those surfaces. So that way you know exactly which ones the paint should be applied to. And it's uh, helpful for, for maintaining intellectual property. Uh, so if you can send a Creo view file to someone, they would be able to view it, but it is not the actual authoring CAD tool. So you are not sending your IP out. So you can send a, a model of uh, an assembly, a truck, a, a small part, whatever the case may be, your customer, your vendor can get the information that they need without sending too much information. So you don't have to worry about jeopardizing your IP. Uh, you can also do some things like adding watermarks in there as well, as you can see here, uh, maybe just adding timestamps to show kind of revision control aspects as well. And scalability. So I mentioned earlier that you can use CreoView to view large assemblies. And I think this airplane here is certainly a, a good example of that. Uh, I may not want to view all of the data because it's going to be very large. Just opening up an assembly like this would be a monumental task. But I might want to be able to take certain measurements, like just determining the distance from here to here, which means I need the assembly in order to do it. So you can see it shows over a billion polygons, and yet you can still open it in CreoView. Uh, mercifully, that is not the file I will be using as our example today. So lastly, what are the benefits of CreoView? You know, it's a, a tool for enterprise, for engineering, for manufacturing. Uh, you can see the various uses for everyone. Uh, I certainly would say that it's just the, the single tool to view everything. It gets everyone what they need without too much. So. It is uh, low cost to use, it protects your IP, streamlines the design, and it does allow for collaboration because you'll see that I'm going to use CreoView to view multiple file types. Um, so it, it really is a benefit throughout the entire company. So that being said, I'm going to show you what CreoView looks like. I'll start with just a drawing. So this is a drawing file. It's a, a 2D file, so it's kind of flat. I can't rotate it. But I can see everything that I need to see. So I can zoom in and pan around. I can see the geometry that's shown here, see the view, read the notes, get all the information I need. So this is just a, a simple drawing viewer. Not necessarily that impressive, but it also doesn't matter where the drawing came from, whether it was a DWG file, if it was a Creo drawing, a CATIA drawing, if it was saved out as a PDF or from AutoCAD. I'm getting everything that I need. I can read the notes, I can zoom around, I can identify based on my grid. I need to look at something that is in section H4, for example. Okay, I see flag note two tells me it's made from aluminum alloy 6061. So this is what it would look like as a, a standalone application. I've just opened up CreoView. I have everything I need. You can see I have my, my tools to zoom in and out, move around and to fit it to the screen. If I wanna make a markup, here are some of the tools I'd use for that. So drawing is pretty simple. I will show you what it looks like a little bit more from Windchill. So you can see now I'm logged into our Windchill database and I'm just browsing around. So I kind of browse to a folder or a project and I can see these little icons, and these thumbnails are generated also through CreoView. So as I hover over these, I'll get kind of a, a quick visualization here. And this is interactive. This is also from CreoView, so I can move around. Right now you can see the little rocket ship icon. I'm zooming in and out, just kind of hovering and flying around. I can rotate that around and kind of see, you know, this looks sort of like a, a chuck key for a drill. If I wanted to open it in CreoView, I can go in Windchill. This is now showing me in my metadata, the information about it. And if I just click on the viewer, I have the option to open in CreoView. Now, 
when it launches, I already have crew view open. So it's going to ask me if I want to create a new session or open it in a new one. I'm just going to create a new session. And this opens up Creo View. Uh, by default, I have everything turned off, so I'm just gonna click on the little checkbox to load it. And you can see I can zoom in and out, I can rotate around. Because it's an assembly, I have my basically bill of materials shown here. So my assembly and then my three parts. All these little check marks are for the visibility. I can turn a part on and off. So this assembly is pretty simple, but if I want to control what is being seen, I can do that. And of course, at the top level is the entire assembly. Um, so I can choose how I spin it around and, and such. Just gives me a feel for it. So certainly if I were to read a bill of materials and I see key base, key handle, and tether, it might be hard to understand what this assembly is, what it looks like. Just opening it up in Creo View, I can see what it looks like. Now I have a better understanding. You can see I also, because it's in Windchill, have some other information embedded in here. What is the status? What is the version? Uh, what is the, the, the date that I've opened this on? Uh, so that tells me today. So I have full revision control in my Creo View files. And now to give you that example of the markup, if I wanted to take some measurements, okay, I want to see what is the, the distance of something. So I'll choose between those, and it's telling me right now it's set to minimum distance. I'm getting 51.132 millimeters. You can change your settings. Right now it's obviously metric, but I can switch it over to standard. I get a summary. It kind of tells me a little bit more about the, the assembly as a whole. And adding in some notes. So as soon as I'm now starting to add more notes, I have the option. Do I want to keep the measurements that I've already done, or do I want to get rid of them? I'll choose to keep them. And now I'm going to put a note in here, and I'm just going to say in my note, look at this. So I'm saying, hey, look at this here, and then I can highlight something, and now I can save this file as its own standalone file, and I can add it to my Windchill database, or I can even email it to someone and say, hey, take a look at this, and this is how I can communicate what I want you to change, what I want you to see. Uh, it gives you a, a good understanding of, of what we're looking at. So to continue on, if I go back to Windchill, I'll browse again. And so you can see various types of, of files. So the icon here, that's telling me this is a 2D file. So you already saw the drawing, what that looks like. These viewers are going to show me, again, what it looks like. Here's a gear. This comes from an assembly of ours that actually is from a, a bicycle. And just to show you another type of file, here is Excel. So again, I can open these files in Creo View uh, if there is a representation for it. Or from Windchill, you can also download the file. So this one's Excel. I can download it and it'll open it up in Excel. Uh, Creo View can, use, uh, can be used to view Office documents like Word and Excel. Personally, I, I don't because I have Office already installed, so I use the native for that. But it is an option just to show you that it is uh, a possibility for various file types. Images, Word files, Excel files, PDFs, CAD files, etc. So lastly, I will show you a larger assembly example. So again, as promised, getting into aerospace, you can see a piece of a landing gear. This is a landing gear off of an A380. So when I look through my bill of materials, you can see the icons that are in yellow or gold, I guess that is, are my assemblies. So I can expand those and see the parts within that. So again, managing visibility, I can choose to turn off individual parts, assemblies, or even the whole when I move it around, it gives me a better chance to see everything. Perhaps these doors, I notice that there's a conflict because probably the door is showing essentially both the open and closed configuration at the same time. If I click in the viewable area on a part or an assembly, it'll highlight in the tree. So I can choose now 
that file or that part to hide and show it. I want to see, try to identify something. What is this round black thing here? Well, when I click on it, it'll highlight in the tree and I can see, ah, it's part of the wheel, part of the wheel assembly. So if you have a larger assembly and you just want to identify something, maybe to be able to find out what it is or what its part number is, clicking in Creo View allows you to, to get that information. So that's, that's certainly one thing that is useful. Uh, maybe now if I want to get the full details of that, now I know this is wheel.assembly. I can go back, open up that specific CAD file. So that way I didn't have to open up the entire assembly to get what I need. I view in Creo View, figure out enough information to then go and get the actual assembly I need if I'm now gonna make some changes, making some edits to that, that assembly. So again, the uh, markup tools are available to me. I have various annotations. I can take measurements and these certainly are measurements that I wouldn't recommend for quality and inspection purposes. Uh, you know, in quality departments shouldn't be going and taking measurements in order to say if something is acceptable or rejected. They should only be going off of the measurements provided as those KPIs. But it's also a good way to do kind of a quick guess and check, just make sure that things make sense. Does it seem approximately right? Or to double check something. And then you have ability to, to take section views. Uh, I mentioned you can do animations. There's a lot of different options that you can do in Creo View. And of course, if you get into the toolkit, you can expand greatly upon that. Uh, the amount of automation we have is just the publisher on our server because we do use Creo View with Windchill. So we have these Creo View files automatically published. Uh, but again, you can go much further than that and create these animations embedded into websites uh, and use it as a, a viewer all around. So I think. That covers the, the largest aspects of Creo View that I wanted to cover today. I'll leave just a little bit of time in case there are any questions. Uh, but of course, if anyone wants to see any more, give it a try. Uh, Creo View comes in various packages. Uh, the Creo View Express package is free. The benefit there, of course, is if I, as a designer, am creating CAD files and I want to be able to send it to someone, I need to know that they're going to be able to view it. So I can show my customer what it looks like. Just say, oh yeah, go ahead and use Creo View Express. It doesn't cost you anything. Creo View Lite is the one that I'm using right now, which comes with Windchill. Uh, and then Creo View MCAD gives you a bit more functionality. That one is uh, a small fee and that allows you to create some of those extra animations and extra things that we talked about. So it's available as a free viewer basically to everyone. And then to be able to do a little bit more, it's as a license and it comes with Windchill for all of your users. So hopefully that helps show you what Creo View is and, and when you'd want to use it. So if there are any questions, feel free to put them in the chat session or even unmute yourself and go ahead and ask away. Uh, but you can, of course, reach out to, to myself, Stuart Weiler at EliteAerospaceCorp.com and I'd be happy to help. So I'll give everyone just another minute to see if there are any questions. But if not, thank you very much for attending. Hope this was useful for you in explaining career view. And again, let me know if there is anything else I can help you with. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a nice day.